Oh, hey folks. Well, it's that time of week again where I go and punish myself by going and reviewing the book of blah blah blah. I enjoy this series as much as I enjoy 2x4 to the back of the skull. It leaves me with a headache and contemplating the failures of my life. And because my lazy ass couldn't be bothered to record a video for episode 2, which is now late and coming out on the day that episode 4 is coming out, I'm going to have to skip my review for episode 3 so I can review episode 4 and then go back and review episode 3 so I can go and complete the collection. I was going to do a combined review of episode 2 and 3, but I ran out of time. It's almost 2 in the morning and I want to get some sleep. So we're going to have to go and talk about Go Go Power Rangers at a later date. Okay, so let's get started with episode two, Dances with Banthas. This episode was directed by Seth Green and is allegedly written by Jon Favreau. It's actually an improvement over episode one, which isn't difficult because the bar was set rather low. The episode starts off with Baby Feet and Fennec Shan going and interrogating the assassin for the previous episode. So this assassin is from the Order of the Fartwin, which means they have a reputation of being complete badasses and they won't talk, uh, which is dumb because he does. All they had to do was dump him in the rancor pit, and as the door slowly opens, he squeals like a fucking pig. And of course, us as the audience already knows that there is no rancor because it was killed in Return of the Jedi. A and for whatever reason, the dead rancor was already cleared from the dungeon. I guess that was already done by Bob Fortuna. So anyway, the Order of Pussy Assassins was hired by the Mayor of Mos Espa. So off they go to confront the mayor, who promptly goes and murders the assassin because you know reasons. And because this TV series is filled with all kinds of video game fetch quests, they have to go back over the sanctuary to go and get answers. Oh, and by the way, Sanctuary is run by Jennifer Beale's character. And might I add, she looks pretty damn fine as a Twilight. Come on, she was born in 63. She's pretty smoking for her age. Spoken! Anyway, she tells Boba Fuss to be careful because Jabba's cousins, that just so happen to be twins, are laying claim to Jabba's throne, and he better watch his back. And of course, as they leave the sanctuary, just because of plot convenience, guess who shows up? Uh, if you guess the twins, you guess correctly. They also show up with their very old Wookiee bounty hunter, Black Chrysanthem, because you know, those Wookiees like flowers. So they're trying to intimidate body fats, but he's like, nah, it'll be fine. And then the huts go and piss off. Because no episode will be complete without dreams from the back to tank, the rest of the episode is a flashback. Which is how we end up with Dances with Banthas. A as the joke might imply, Booby Flats learns the ways of the sand people. Now, one of the things I find so hilarious about this episode is the fact that so many people are praising the fact that sand people are basically Native Americans. Which is odd, because the exact same people that go and complain that orcs are racist because they represent black people are praising this episode. Hell, I would like to know why these people aren't calling out the cultural appropriation of Native American culture that is being used by a multinational corporation to make money in their TV show. Hell, this is pretty much the exact same kind of people that call out the totem barbarian in D&D as being culturally insensitive, appropriation, and all the other nonsense. So why is that? Well, that's easy. These people lack consistency, and these arguments are pretty much retarded. One of the major plot points of the flashback is that the Pike Syndicate is running a spice train through Tuscan territory. Now, as the train goes through the territory, the Pikes go and use the Tuscans and Banthas for target practice. This train is going super fast, and they manage to land every single shot. Because, you know, plot contrivance. Now, this is something that actually happened in the American Old West where people on trains traveling from the East Coast to the West would go and randomly shoot buffalo for target practice, which ultimately led to the decline of their population. Great job, Disney. You saved the world. You brought attention to the plight of native peoples and the evils of colonialism. Great job. This type of shit works great in Star Trek, not so much in Star Wars. 
So Body Positivity Bulba goes and steals a bunch of speeder bikes from a local speeder bike gang and goes and brings them back to the village. And because the sand people are nothing but a bunch of moronic savages, they start going and beating on the speeder bikes because they're afraid of technology. I swear, Disney, what exactly are the sand people supposed to be? Noble savages like the Native Americans? Or a bunch of retarded chimpanzees? Either which way, it's kind of insulting. Next, Minnesota Fats tries to teach the sand people how to ride the speeder bikes. And then we get this scene. Like a panther. Yes. Retired chimpanzees one, noble savages zero. After a successful training montage, Shamu the Bounty Hunter goes and leads the retarded chimpanzees on an attack on the Pike Syndicate train. And because this is a Disney property, all the male warriors of the tribe are fucking morons. And it's up to the strong female Tusker Raider warrior to go and save the day. Yay, girl power. And finally, Baron Harkonnen makes it to the engine, where he confronts the droid that's operating the train, who, much like the audience, jumps out the window and runs the other way. <laughs> Being victorious, I'm actually running out of fat jokes. Blah Blah Fett is inducted into the tribe and then goes and participates in the peyote ceremony. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he gets a lizard up the nose, which causes him to hallucinate, where he goes and wanders off for a few days and comes back with a tree branch. Now, I bet you're asking yourself, comics, where, where does somebody get a tree branch on a desert planet? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I've been asking that one myself. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. And then, in a really long and drawn out scene, Blah Blah Fett goes and carves himself a gaffy stick. Which is funny, because I always thought those things were made of metal. Apparently not anymore. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. I'll be honest with you folks, it's getting really hard for me to care these days. And that's it. That's the episode. I rate this episode with three and a half bloated Stuckmans. An uncomfortable case of testicular torsion. That's where your daddy sex gets tied up in a knot. It's an actual thing. You should go look it up. Now really quickly, I want to address some comments I got from my previous review. We complained for years how Rey having no weaknesses made her a boring character. So what does Jon Favreau do? He takes a character we all love, who was almost killed, and giving him weaknesses to overcome to make a more interesting story. Okay, I do think that is a fair point, but I'm going to go and counter it. Now, there's a big difference between Rey and Boba Fett. Now, for Rey, she's at the beginning of her journey. She's learning about her newfound Jedi powers and going through the process of mastering them. In a nutshell, she's going through the hero's journey, and potentially one that would closely mirror what Luke went through. Now, for Boba Fett, because he's in the middle of his career, he should be looking for new and more dangerous challenges to go and take on, furthering his reputation as being the most dangerous bounty hunter in the galaxy, which could also lead into other bounty hunters going and looking for Boba Fett to go and take him out to go and further their own reputations. Now, I think this is something we need to take in consideration when it comes to judging a character, because after all, they are gonna be in different phases of their careers or their stories per se. The challenges of the novice are not going to be the same as the challenges of the master. Now, I also got a lot of comments saying, how can I judge a series when I haven't seen the entire thing yet? Well, that's pretty simple. I've watched every series that has been released on Disney Plus, with the exception of The Bad Batch. So I pretty much have a good idea how these things end, which is typically with disappointment. On top of that, I don't have to bite into a shit sandwich to know that it tastes like shit. I can typically tell just by looking at it, which is... How this applies when it comes to trailers and, well, the first episode of a TV series, because that first episode is supposed to hook you in. And if it fails to do that, I lose interest. Here's an example. I only watched the first 15 minutes of the Netflix series for Cowboy Bebop, and then I simply stopped watching. Why? Because that show is garbage. And the Rotten Tomatoes reviews back that up. Now, when it comes to a series I'm just gonna watch and not actually do any kind of review, if I don't like the first episode, I'm not going to bother wasting my time and going and watching the rest of the series just to see whether it's good or not. That's fucking stupid. Most people, when they watch a show and they don't like it, they simply stop watching it. No self-respecting person that values their time is going to go and watch the entire series that is garbage just to go, 
Well, I've watched the whole thing. Now I can officially judge it and say that it's crap. No, they bail on the first fucking episode. That's what normal people do. And I'm pretty sure that's something that you do when it's a series that you don't like. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and comment. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. A huge thanks to all the subscribe star supporters. Without you, Comics Division would probably be crying in a corner somewhere. Well, hello there, big spenders. Roger the Shrubber and Toxic Man Flu. I'm a sucker with a lot of dough. Crazy Cat Guy, Mr. Grant Gregory, DJ O, and David Blair. Take my money, damn it! Commander Ed Straker of Shadow, Terminus S, Elagabalus, Darius M, commenting is dangerous, Salty Texas C, LDH27513, subscriber number 22F2C6C3, Jaffo, Dexy Doodle, Mech AG94, and That 70s Rock Fan. I'll buy that for a dollar. User 4E144CB6, TZ Canadian, Chris from the 80s, Stamp 4, John B, Colin Douglas, and Jenna Lynn. Thank you all for watching. You are awesome.